Hi, today we're going to talk about why you should use a managed service mesh versus deploying your very own and managing it yourself in your own environment. And it has to do with these three main areas of security, resiliency, and speed. So we'll start first with security. So let's say you have a service mesh. So we'll start with an example with some services. Service A, service B, and you have this service mesh. So if you want to secure your services with the service mesh, you can. And one of the things that the service mesh will do is distribute these certificates called TLS certificates. And when they distribute to the services, the services will communicate, but before communicating or before sending traffic, they will exchange their TLS certificates to ensure that each of the services are authenticated and validated. Once that is done, then the traffic moving from A to B will be encrypted. All right, and so we call this mutual TLS. So that's great. So now you've secured traffic between two services. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're fully secure yet because there are other services on your network that you may not want to be communicating with each other or with these services, right? So what do you do? Well, you have to authorize them. Most service meshes will have uh, authoriz authorization policies that are defaulted to allow all of them to communicate as a starting point. And that's not, you know, that's not ideal because if you forget to set that, then all services can communicate. So what you want is to have a deny all policy by default. So if you're using a managed service mesh, uh, something like HTTP console, which is a managed service mesh provided by HashiCorp, one of the first things it makes, uh, it ensures is that you have these deny all policies in place. And that's on by default for that exact reason, right? So now, other services that are on there, they need to have explicit uh, permissions to allow one service to talk to another. So how do you do that? Well, in order to do that, what you would do is have you know an admin or an operator or developer, or they would go into the service mesh and uh, set up these rules. If you're using console, these rules are called intentions. And it's basically, basically a rule that says, hey, I wanna allow service A to talk to service B. So then, Everything else is denied except for service A talking to service B. So that leads us to the next part, which is you may be thinking, well, you know, if this person can just get onto this you know, service mesh and set these intentions, set these rules, can anyone who has you know, a bad actor perhaps has breached the network, can they go into your service mesh and you know, change all these rules? And the answer, if you're using you know, console or HTTP console is no, not necessarily because you can't just hop onto a service mesh. You'd have to use a token. So in order for these tokens to be required, what you'd have is HCLs that are required or that are enabled by default, right? So if AC HCLs, ACLs are uh, enabled by default, what would happen is these tokens are required in order to get access into the service mesh. Uh, and then these tokens also, they don't allow full access, right? They're very specific and very granular in, al in allowing certain read permissions, certain write permissions, and allowing certain permissions for various parts of the console service mesh, right? So uh, much more is required to, than, than just someone getting onto your network. So it makes it more secure when you have ACLs enabled, and HCP console has that by default. The third thing has to do with patches, and CVEs. So if you are managing this service mesh yourself, and again, let's use console as an example. If you're managing this yourself, um, then a lot of times you're gonna have to maintain it right, and make sure you have the latest uh, OS or latest software on it, and that includes any type of vulnerabilities. Yeah, make sure you're on top of all the CVEs that are out there and patch them appropriately if your service mesh is vulnerable, right? So there's some burden on you to maintain that over time. So instead, what you can do is, again, have HTTP console manage that for you. So what happens is, with HTTP, there's this managed environment here called HVN, and this stands for HashiCorp Virtual Network. So it's basically a managed environment that is maintained by our SREs 
who are you know, making sure that it's not just up and running and no issues are there, but they're also keeping track of all the CVEs that are out there. So if they're notified of a CVE, their job is to make sure that the uh, the managed service mesh, you know, HCP in this case, is up to date and upgraded appropriately so there are no vulnerabilities, so you're protected fully, and you don't have to worry about that part. Okay, cool. So the next part has to do with resiliency. So when we're talking about resiliency, let's start with an example. Let's say again, you are deploying console in your own environment, you're managing it yourself, and we're deploying this on Kubernetes. Within your Kubernetes cluster, you have these nodes. Of course, these nodes have pods. And if you're deploying console on here, you'll have console servers running in these pods, along with your services and other components uh, of console as well. But the main part is your console servers that we're gonna focus in on. So the console servers are important because they store a lot of the configurations, uh, they push out all the intentions and policies that you set forth, uh, and they really control a lot of the control plane part of your service mesh. So what happens if one of them goes down? Well, that's fine because you have additional servers, redundant servers that can take over. But what happens if the whole Kubernetes cluster goes down? Well, now uh, you're out of luck because you can't just easily transition or fail over to another uh, console service mesh. Uh, you you want to have to you want that you may have to redeploy this whole thing yourself and make sure that the same configurations are applied, same intentions, uh, same policies, and all all the same exact uh, setup is is applied to this new deployment. So that'll take time, right? Or you're at the mercy of making sure this. Uh, this Kubernetes cluster gets back online. So you have to go troubleshoot and things like that. So instead, what you can do is use HCP console to have all your console servers reside there. So you're basically isolating the, the important core parts of, of console, of your service mesh, and having it reside elsewhere, right? So that elsewhere could be this HVN we talked about, this HashiCorp virtual network where you can have your console servers running. And these console servers are running and maintained, again, by our SREs for making sure that everything's appropriately running, uh, that HA's applied, all the best practices are applied, and you uh, would just have to connect to it. So basically, let's go back to the same example where you have your, all these different Kubernetes clusters uh, and your services running in these. And all you do is connect your network where your clusters are running to the HashiCorp virtual network. And that can be done very easily with a peered connection, right? Or a transit gateway, right? So if some failure occurs, say this whole Kubernetes cluster goes down, uh, you can easily redeploy with your services uh, or you can just simply fail over your services to another cluster that is already connected to uh, to the console service here and continue on. You're not having to troubleshoot, you're not having to worry about redeploying the core parts of your service mesh and you're reducing that, that you know, potential downtime. And you, again, you're offloading everything to our own CV, CREs who, you know, they're, they're the ones who will get paged, not you, if something arises, all right? So let's now move on to the third part, which is speed. And we'll start with another example. So let's say you have your platform operators in your organization. And these platform operators are really responsible for uh, supporting the various developers throughout your organization. And these various developers typically you know, would deploy their own environment at will, and these environments can be various you know, Kubernetes clusters, VM environments, ECS, what have you. And this platform operator is really you know, making sure that all of these different uh, developers and their, uh, their environments have the same consistent security measures in place, and so they have to really support that, right? Uh, if, and they can quickly become the bottleneck if that's the case. So uh, instead, what they can do is use a shared solution, again, like HCP console, running in this HVN. So you now have 
HCP console running here. And as soon as any of these environments come online, uh, their developers or the admins or, or the network folks can easily connect to this HVN, again, just simply using a peered connection or a transit gateway. And as soon as they do that, they can start utilizing a lot of these surface mesh capabilities. So one cool thing is that we're using a shared service here with HTTP, right? And you have different teams, different tenants. There's a feature called admin partitions that is addressing multi-tenancy. So what happens is you can create these separate administrative boundaries between these different teams. And so now these different teams have autonomy to configure their own separate environment, apply their own rules, apply their own intentions, apply their own configurations, and not affect these other teams. And the services between them won't be able to see each other either, unless you explicitly allow that, right? Or unless you explicitly want that. And that can happen as well. So you can have your services here, connect to services here, right? Uh, and another cool thing is that these environments can be running on the same, same uh, IP addresses, right? So you, you can have overlapping IP addresses and still be able to connect these different services, which, you know, this can be an issue with, with a lot of different teams just using the same uh, site arranges and they can't connect to each other because of that issue. So really, in the end, using HTTP console improves your speed of which you can have different, you know, teams bring up their environments easily connect up to HCP console and start using the service mesh capabilities while at the same time, the platform operators can push out all the security measures consistently across all the different teams. So hopefully you can see why a managed service mesh like HCP console is really beneficial and can help you with your security, resiliency, and the speed of which you deploy across different teams. So if you want more information, uh, take a look at our links in our description. And so I wanna say thanks for watching.